My Burger Lab swept burger lovers off their feet when it launched four years ago. However, while it popularized the fat of gourmet burger, has the fat come to an end? We asked co-founder Teo Wike whether My Burger Lab has missed the growth bandwagon. So you guys started the trend of the, this fancy black charcoal buns back in 2012 and it became viral, everybody was talking about it and we saw long queues still at this outlet, Sea Park Do you think, you, you know, with all these gourmet burger outlets coming up KGB, Burger Junkyard, Fat Boy setting up in, this, uh, in KL mm -hmm. do you see this as a competition? Are you concerned of this? Um, I think it's something that we were very much concerned about during the first two years uh, when it opened uh, there were many more burger joints, uh, you know, mentioned apart from what you just said on the list. Uh, and competition will always be there, and that's something that we accepted, you know, after a couple of years uh, in the business. Um, the only thing that we always have to focus on is that how do we compete within ourselves to make ourselves better year after year. And I think that's always the biggest competition. Um, and thankfully, you know, we have always tried to achieve bigger goals as the year goes by. And you know, thankfully we are still here, mm. so, so that's a good sign. I think the million dollar mm. question is, uh, do you think you have missed the boat of expanding? Our pace of expansion, uh, looking back, could definitely be a bit faster. Uh, probably three or four months faster uh, in general, but you know, I, I think looking back, uh, expanding four outlets in four years is considered quite a decent pace. Uh, because you know, doing F&B, really, we need to really set a very strong um, foundation and not all concepts are better served at mass scale. Uh, for example, there are some sushi restaurants in Japan which only works like only two outlets and President Obama visits them. You know, so having many outlets doesn't mean it's better in that sense of our experience. So for us, it's just maintain, maintaining quality for customers mm -hmm. as the best capacity that we can. Mm. So talking about expansion mm -hmm. and outlets, right now you have four burger lab outlets all together and how many more are you planning to grow mm. or to which country is the right question? Right, um, I think for Malaysia wise we're still focusing mainly on Klang Valley um, not so much of you know, out, 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 out of Klang Valley um, reason being because you know, we have a strong foothold here already uh, customer base and also staff um, and hopefully we can open two more in the next 12 months uh, something we're looking at well our five year roadmap down the road will probably be more countries in Southeast Asia you know, like Vietnam um, Singapore, Thailand, Philippines, Indonesia. Uh, just a few to mention mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. My Burger Lab always come up with new recipes. Uh, we, we see the Kaiju Burger, the Stink Bomb. How much do you usually spend on R&D per year? Right. Uh, we don't really have a allocated number for R&D usually. Um, I think because when it comes to food, you know, if, if there's something great to experiment on, uh, shouldn't be hold back by a, by a strict budget. Uh, but my but my partner has done a very good job, you know, in terms of um, knowing how to fix failures of R and D faster, so that we don't have to, you know, waste a lot of uh, unnecessary costs and resources on, on the R and D part. Now, currently, you have a break between mm. some of your outlets. Two of your outlets actually have have breaks between two to four, but mostly, most of your outlets uh, operate from five to ten, fifteen. Mm -hmm. Are you planning to expand the working hours given? the right. demand in the market? Most of our focus is still on dinner period. Uh, reason being because of our price point as well and also the feasibility of our, basically our, our food, right, in terms of consumer behaviour, whether they come and eat our food uh, during those two to five, which is a three hours break. Um, and through our own experience and study, um, it just seems natural that, you know, the amount of hours we open, we might actually lose more if we don't hit the volume that we want. Just now we talked about staffing issue. Mm. Most of the staff, they are students. They come in uh, at night to work mm. in your restaurants. And what are the other challenges are you facing? I think the challenge that we are facing um, is definitely how do we sustain our food quality um, as well as how do we manage our shelf life better. You know, as, as, a store grow, as, as the amount of stores grows, you know, our demand can be quite unpredictable sometimes and maintaining a shelf life to reduce food wastage is really important. Uh, apart from that, so, so, you know, how do you keep on constantly uh, create uh, you know, relevancy in the, in, in, as the years go by in terms of our product, in terms of um, 
you know, our R&D pr product, whether or not it's something that people would be interested in as, as the years goes by, people want to be more and more healthy conscious as well. So how do we then incorporate that into people's mindset that burger -like burgers are actually not not as unhealthy as people perceive burgers to be. I believe that you have gotten a lot of requests on this. Are you planning to franchise your business to others? Yeah, so that's that's one of the challenges as well, right? Like uh, the reason why we haven't franchised until today uh, is because uh, we know that the way we do things is something not everyone can achieve. Mm. Uh, the complexity of our concept, the complexity of our operations is not uh, you know, any business owner would be able or be, be willing to want to put a heart and soul into it. Um, and I have to give it credit to you know, my staff for pulling that through. Um, and that's why, back down to our philosophy of wanting to make sure that quality is still consistent, hence we decided to do it ourselves, still maintain um, the pace that we can within our capacity. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, just to serve customers better. The service you're providing through WhatsApp is only for a dine-in and pick-up. Are you planning to expand this space to delivery within the PJ area? Right. Uh, we've been trying on the, the WhatsApp uh, communication method for about five months now. And uh, things seem to be pretty decent actually. And we have, have actually tested um, a closed door delivery uh, service, which we don't usually heavily promote to others. Um, and the traction seems to be pretty well. What's your advice to new entrepreneurs, especially those who want to venture into food and beverage businesses? One of the most basic things any, anyone who wants to do an FMB is really to go work at an FMB place for at least three months. Start from learn how to sweeping the floor, mop the floor, mop wiping tables. Uh, these are the essential basics because if you can't handle the basics of a food industry, you just can't run a restaurant. Okay. Despite tough competition, my Burger Lab is intent on keeping its title as originator and is banking on its expansion to keep it on top of the gourmet burger business.